A real-time presence system allows users to know whether or not their fellow users are online, offline, or away in some other idle status. In this episode, we're going to use Slack as our inspiration to build a system that will show the status of users throughout the app. We're building a fully-fledged system that will be able to detect whether or not a user is engaging with an app based on a timer, and also whether or not a user has closed the app and update the status on each of these events. At this point, I'm assuming you have a basic authentication system in place with Angular Fire 2. If not, I've added a link in the description that discusses that topic more extensively. The first thing we want to do is see if the user has an active connection to the Firebase real-time database. Firebase keeps track of this information in a secret location called info slash connected, which we can subscribe to just like anything else in the database. This tells us whether the current client has a connection to the database. So let's go into our auth service and put this to use. First, we'll import the Angular Fire database as well as Angular Fire auth and the main Firebase SDK. Then we'll set a variable for the current user as user ID. And inside the constructor, we'll subscribe to the Angular Fire auth state, which is just the currently logged in user. And if we have a user, we're going to set their user ID on the service and also subscribe to that connection data that I just described earlier. When we actually determine the current user's status, we'll save it as the status property under their user ID in the real time database. We're going to update the status frequently, so we'll create a helper function that we can just pass the status as an argument, and that will update the database. So anytime we detect a status change, we can call this helper, and the database gets updated. From there, we can create another function that will subscribe to the info slash connected data, which will just be a Boolean true or false. If it's true, we'll set the user status to online, and if it's false, we'll set it to offline. Then we call our helper function, and subscribe, and we're all set. If we go to the app, we can see that when we log in, we have an active connection to Firebase, so we display the online status. This works okay when a user logs in, but if they close the window, it's not going to update the status to offline. Thankfully, Firebase has an on disconnect callback that we can use to listen for when the user disconnects from the database. To use this function, we need to interact with the Firebase SDK directly. Let's add another function to our constructor, this time called update on disconnect. It works by making a reference to the user's status in the database, and then calls the onDisconnect function, and then updates the status to offline. So this function will only run when the database connection is disconnected. In the app, we have a logged in user on the left and a non logged in user on the right. When the logged in user closes their browser window, it ends the database connection and their status is updated to offline. So what if a user has the app open, but they're not actively using it? For that, we want to set a third status called away. We can manage that state by listening for mouse events in the browser and then resetting a timer each time a new mouse event occurs. If that timer expires, then we can set the status to away. So we'll set up a couple subscriptions, one for the mouse event and one for the timer itself. Then we'll create another function called update on idle. Inside this function, we create an observable that's listening to mouse events in the DOM. Mouse events happen frequently, so we want to throttle them to happen only every two seconds. If you imagine each circle representing a mouse event, they'll be grouped into chunks and only the first one that occurred in that two second period will be emitted. When we get a mouse event, we can go ahead and update the status to online because we know the user is engaged. And we also want to reset the timer, which is counting down to set the user to away status. The timer itself is a subscription, so if there's one existing in the app, we want to unsubscribe from it. Then we create a new timer by calling observable.timer. This time we're setting it to 5,000 milliseconds. In real life, you probably want to set it a lot longer than that. Then when that timer runs out, it'll set the status to away. And on a final note, you probably want to end these subscriptions when you no longer need them. For example, if a user signs out, we'll go ahead and unsubscribe from the mouse events as well as the timer. If we go into the app and just let the mouse sit idle, we can see after five seconds, the status gets updated to away. If we go back into the app, it immediately updates back to online. If I click log out, then it'll update to offline. Now let's go ahead and build the actual component that the user sees on the front end. So here I have a list of users that I've pulled from the database, and I'm going to pass the user status to a child component called user status. We do this by using the input decorator from Angular. Inside the user status component TypeScript, we just import input and then declare a variable called status with that decorator. 
This situation is a perfect time to use the ng switch directive, which works just like a switch operator in JavaScript or any other programming language. We pass the user status to ng switch, and then we can use an ng switch case to display different templates depending on what the user status is. So if the user is online, we give it a green success CSS class. If they're offline, we give it a red CSS class, and so on. This makes it easy to add your own custom icons or whatever kind of presentation you want to do here. You can also add an ng switch default, which will ensure that something displays if none of the statuses match what you have in the switch cases. That's it for building a user presence system with Angular 4 and Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want access to exclusive content and one-on-one -on -one project consulting, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book, as well as access to our pro members channel on Slack. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.